You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on circular and satellite motion. The topic of this video is Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. And we want to know what is the conceptual meaning of Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation and how do you use the law to solve physics word problems. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed Isaac Newton's apple and the moon argument that led to the claim that the force that caused the moon to orbit the earth was the same force that caused the apple to free fall to the earth. This force was the force of gravity. In his argument, he used acceleration values known in the day for the apple and for the moon. He recognized that since the acceleration of the moon was so much smaller, if gravity was causing its acceleration, then somehow gravity must be diluted by distance. He recognized that the moon was 60 times further from the center of the earth than the apple was from the center of the earth. And being 60 times further from the center of the earth, its acceleration value ends up being 60 squared times smaller. This is known as the inverse square law. And when applied to the force of gravity, we could say that the force of gravitational attraction between any two objects is inversely proportional to the square of the distance that separates them. As a proportion proportionality statement, it would look something like that. Now Newton is the F net equal MA person, and he knows that the gravity force is the only force acting upon the moon, so it's the net force. And since net force depends on mass, he reasoned that mass must somehow factor into the gravitational equation. And he reasoned, since he's the third law person, that since there's not only a force of the Earth pulling on the moon, but also of the moon pulling on the Earth, this force of gravitation must also depend upon the mass of the Earth. This led him to the claim that the force of gravitational attraction between any two objects is directly proportional to the product of the masses of those two attracting objects. As a proportionality statement, it would look something like that. Now if we take these two proportionality statements and put them together into one, we're left with this, that the force of gravitational attraction between any two objects is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the distance of separation between the two object centers. And this is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Newton's law is all about proportionality statements, and there's two of them one for mass and one for distance. When it comes to distance, the proportionality statement would claim that by whatever factor the separation distance is changed, the F grab value is changed in the opposite direction by the square of that factor. When I say in the opposite direction, I mean that if the distance got smaller, the F grab, grab would get bigger. If the distance got bigger, the F grab would get smaller. They change in the opposite or inverse direction. Here's what I mean. If we were to take the separation distance and double it, make it two times larger, then we would cause the F grab value to be smaller by a factor of two squared. That is, the F grab would become one fourth of the original value. And if we were to triple the separation distance, make it three times larger, then we would cause the F grab value to be smaller by a factor of three squared. That is, it would be one ninth of the original value. And if we made the separation distance smaller, like we took the objects and moved them closer together, we would make the F grab larger. For instance, if you were to half the separation distance, make it two times smaller, then you'd make the F grab two squared times larger. It would become four times the original value. Now if we take this principle and we apply it to the apple and the moon argument, we could claim that if an object like the moon was 60 times further from Earth's center than an object like an apple, then that moon's acceleration in force would be 60 squared times smaller. That is one 3,600th of the original value. When it comes to the proportionality statement about mass, we would claim that by whatever factor the mass is changed, the F grab would be changed by the same factor and in the same direction. And if a change is made to both masses, then you'll have to make two changes to the F grab. Here's what I mean. Let's suppose that we were to double the M1 value. That would cause the F grab to double as well it would become two times the original value. And if we were to triple the M2 value, that would make the F grab value three times larger. 
and if we were to both double the M1 value and triple the M2 value, then you'd have to make two changes to the F graph. You'd have to double it and triple it, which together means the F graph would become six times larger. Now if we were to half the M1 value, make it smaller, that would make F graph smaller. In fact, it would change it by one half and make it one half the original value. And if we were to both half the M1 value and triple the M2 value, that's two changes, and two changes would have to be made to F graph. We would have to half the F graph because of the M1 change, and then triple the F graph value because of the M2 change. When put together, that makes the F graph value three halves the original value, or 1.5 times the original value. Let's do a practice problem, and a rather difficult one. We have two objects, they have the same mass, but they're on different gravitational environments. Object A is on a planet that has one-third the mass of the planet that Object B is on, and Object A is two times closer to that planet's center than Object B is to its planet's center. Now I have to figure out which object, A or B, has the greatest force of gravity towards its planet, and by what factor. To answer this, I have to reason through it one variable at a time. So I'm going to start with object A in its mass. It's on a one-third as massive planet. And since mass and F graph are directly proportional, that variable alone would cause object A to experience one-third the F graph. But now I have to consider distance. Object A is two times closer to that object center. And when it comes to distance, it's an inverse square relationship. That means I have to square the two. So just because of the distance, object A would experience four times the force compared to object B. Now I have to put these two things together, mass and distance. And when it comes to mass, object A loses by a factor of a third. But when it comes to distance, object A wins by a factor of four. So object A experiences the greatest force of gravity, and it's greater by a factor of four-thirds. Newton's law of universal gravitation is a proportionality statement with no known proportionality constant. That is, we don't know what k is in this equation. The first efforts to determine the proportionality constant were made by Henry Cavendish in 1798 using a sensitive torsion balance shown here. A bar was hung from a wire that was suspended from the ceiling. On the end of the bar were two small masses of known mass. Larger, bowling ball sized masses were brought near these masses, causing a gravitational force. The bar would begin to twist through an angle, theta, causing the wire to twist as well. The wire could only take too much twist before it would stop twisting. Since this was a balance, the relationship between the force in the wire and the angle, theta, were known. Cavendish could use this information to determine the proportionality constant in the F grav equation. Today, the proportionality constant is known as the universal gravitation constant, and its symbol is capital letter G. It has a known value of 6.6743 times 10 to the negative 11th. The units that you see here suggest that when we use the equation with this value of g, we must have our distance in units of meters and our mass in units of kilograms. Now that we know the proportionality statement, we can use the equation to solve physics word problems. And here's our first example. Determine the force of gravitational attraction between the sun and the earth. We're given the mass of the sun, the mass of the earth, and the distance between their centers. So like any problem in physics, I write down what I know, and I write down what I'm looking for, the F graph. And then I take my equation and carefully substitute known values into the equation in order to solve for F graph. As I do, I'll have to be careful about how I use my calculator. If I do it correctly, I'll get 3.54 times 10 to the 22nd newtons. It's, as expected, a rather large force. If you're not getting this value, particularly the 10 to the 22nd part, then I recommend you sit down with a friend and talk about how to use your calculator. They can be tricky, but just with a little in-person help, you're likely to get it right. Let's try another problem. Determine the force of gravitational attraction between you and the Earth when you stand on its surface. We're given the mass of you, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth. We want to know the F graph. So I write down what I know and what I'm looking for. You'll notice that the distance here is simply the radius of the Earth. That's how far you are from the Earth's center when you stand on its surface. Now I want to calculate F grab using this equation. So I must take all my values and put them in the right place. When I do, 
and I pull out my calculator, I get 735 newtons as the force of gravity. Wait a second. I've done this before. In another unit, I've calculated the F grab of a 75, new, 75 kilogram person on Earth's surface. I just use this equation, m times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. You see, Newton's law of universal gravitation gives us the same result as this equation, only it's more universal and can be used for more situations. For our last problem, we wish to determine the force of gravitational attraction between you and your lab partner when you're sitting in your seats with your centers spaced 1.2 meters apart. Here's what I know, and here's what I'm looking for, and here's my equation. I need to take all these numbers and put them in the right spot. Then pull out my calculator and solve for the value of F grab. And when I do, it's a really small number. It's a really small number for a couple of reasons. First, the value of G is a really small proportionality constant. 10 to the negative 11th is really small. And in order to offset the small value of G and get any sort of sizable force out of it, you need to have large masses. And you don't really have very large masses here relative to planets and suns and moons and things like that. So there's a couple of things you could do, if you wish, to increase that gravitational attraction between you and your lab partner. One of them is you could move a little bit closer, making the D go down and the F grab go up. Or the other thing you could do is you could put on a whole lot more mass and become a larger massive object. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help me out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are five resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each in the description section of this video. If you need help doing calculations, try our calculator pad. If you need help with the proportional reasoning, try the Minds on Physics or the Concept Builders. If you just like to change a variable and play around with the system, that's what this simulation's for. And if you need a written tutorial, we have that also. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.